this is our Earth 520 million years ago. Most of Earth is covered with water. Earth looks strange and unknown. In this blue world are some land masses. On land, Earth looks like just one single empty desert where life seems almost impossible. It's just hot and empty. But in the water, it's something different. The sea is full filled with life, a lot more than a precambrium. But what exactly happened to life? That is what we call the Cambrian explosion. No one knows exactly how it came to exist. But that's maybe because in the precambrium were no predators or anything else that forced any adaptation. And at the end of Precambrium appeared first predators. The animals and both predator and prey need to evolve or to die. And that was maybe the begin of the race between prey and predator. And because of this race, we had a very fast evolution. We needed a lot, lot new species. Complex life forms appeared and the evolution was very fast. And that is what we call the Cambrian explosion. And that's maybe because in the Cambrium are suddenly so much life forms. We have a beautiful shallow sea filled with creatures like jellyfish. We have also prehistoric sponges called Veuxia. These creatures are a chance for smaller ones to hide. That's good, cause an Eurydicea wants to mate. When it's mating time, the male Eurydicea have a colored back to attract the females. That's an advantage in the race, cause attracting the females allows them to mate more often and to make more babies. That means more Eurydicea. Of course, some other animals also invented this. It can also happen that two males are seeing one female. Then they fight and the winner is allowed to mate. In this way, the genes of the stronger one get leaved to the babies. And the babies get also stronger. The Eurydicea have another invention that allows this kind of adversity at all. Eyes. Many trilobit species have facet eyes. Some up to 15,000. Others are blind and live in the mud. Those who have eyes have a new way of perception. They can spot enemies and find, as you, Partners. They use visual effects like this to attract each other. But it has also a downside. There are now predators with eyes which can also be attracted. This mighty beast is an Opabinia. A strange looking arthropod with around the double size of Eurydicea. It has extensions that help him to swim and a trunk to catch prey. It likes to eat Eurydicea and turns in the shallow seas of the Cambrian. It usually goes for worms like this, but a small trilobite like Eurydicea seems also to be a nice target.
its extensions make the Opa Binya maybe fast, but the small trilobites are a lot more maneuverable in the Vergsia colonies. Both can escape and continue mating. After mating, the female Eurydicea leaves the Vauxia reefs and goes to the others. It serves food for preparing the eggs. Trilobite means free lob crab. Its body has three segments, head, back sign and tail. Trilobites are the most secret animals in the Paleozoicum. But despite their skeet, they have many predators to face. Except from Opebinia, there are also snails and jellyfish who like to eat them. Starfish kill them in the same way as they kill shells and brachiopods. Even the picaya who are usually harmless for trilobites, go sometimes for the babies. Being a trilobite means danger. Our female Eurydlichia needs to lay her eggs, but at first she must find a good place. A rock column seems to be a nice place, because the chance that predators find the eggs is a lot lower. She lays thousands of eggs, cause many Eurydicea won't ever leave the egg, they will be eaten. This small trilobite is called Eos. She must learn quickly how dangerous the Cambrian is. She just slippered and is in danger. This isn't an Eurydlichia, this is another trilobite species. However, it's hungry and Eos would be a good meal. Eos can escape to the Vauxia reef and hide herself. This will be her new home. In the reef are just a few predators and there's enough space to hide for a young Eurydlichia. In the near, we have a kelp forest. This forest is filled with strange creatures called Hallucigenia, who search for food at the ground, but they are in danger. This is Hallucigenia's bigger relative, Vivexia. It's not a danger for the Hallucigenia. Dangerous is what it hides. The Opabinia is behind it. It doesn't want to attack Vivexia. Opabinia isn't really a macro predator. It abuses Vivexia for an ambush. Opabinia leaves Vivexia and goes for Hallucigenia. It has a very special way of killing. Hallucigenia isn't an easy target for Opabinia with its spikes, but Opabinia found a pretty ugly way to kill and to eat it. It pours its grassed juice over Hallucigenia. Yes, that sounds pretty ugly, but even today, some animals are using this trick of killing and eating uh, prey. Today's crab spider attacks bees. To kill such a big victim, it uses a poison to digest the bee alive. When it's digested, its carcass can be drinked up. Opabinia has no poison at all, but the grastic juice is a nice alternative. Eos saw this attack and is very happy that she has the safety of the Vauxias. Even between the Vauxias, it's really dangerous. There are many predators who like eating young Eurydicias even other trilobite species. Luckily, there are more Eurydicias than the predators can eat. Some of them 
always survive and they grow. They grow very quickly. Much time is over and Eos is now old enough to leave the Vauxia and to go to the other Eurydicia. Now or never. But this is dangerous. Many predators are waiting for this event. The Opabinia had no other meal after it killed the Hallucigenia. That means now it's hungry. Eos is in great danger, but she is lucky. A young Anomalocaris is also hungry, but Eos is way too small to be eaten. It attacks and kills the Opabinia. Eos is now safe. She can reach the others. Eos visits once again the Vauxia. She wants to mate. Two males are seeing Eos, but three are one too much. First they try to impress the other, then they fight. The winner is allowed to mate. Eos becomes a mother. But when she tries to lay her eggs, a predator is finding her. It's a Lagania. But once again, the young Anomalocaris is saving her. The Lagania means competition. Both are going into the battle. The young Anomalocaris is bigger and heavier. It can injure Lagania. Lagania escapes, but now it's in trouble. A group of high co -ichtis. They can't kill Lagania but they can bite off pieces of meat to eat them. Heiko Ichtis has something special on it. Its ancestors were worms like Pikaya, but it invented something special. It has world's first bones. But why this is an advantage? We have two kinds of invertebrates. The ones are using an armor to protect themselves but that doesn't make them really maneuverable. The others have no armor and are maneuverable, but fragile and an easy target for predators. Heiko Ichtus is agile but not fragile. Now Lagania has a lot more problems than the Heiko Ichtus. An adult Anomalocaris. It attacks and kills the Lagania. Anomalocaris is not just the biggest creature of the Cambrian. It has also an armor to protect itself and deadly claws to kill its prey. Its extensions help it to swim and to stop the victim escape. Eos is now an old Eurydicia. Her body gets too weak. She searches a place to hide and die. Trilobites will keep their secret, but evolution doesn't sleep. Heiko Ichtus also will be secret and evolve into something new.